Hi everyone, welcome back to Hustle is for Life Motivation and I am just super excited to be here with you tonight. As always, I'm here to serve you. I want to really add value to you guys every single time that I do an interview, I do a video, etc. And the channel is called Hustle is for Life. There's a reason behind it. I believe that we need to hustle in every area of our life to really take our lives to the next level. If you're serious about you know, uh, taking your life to the next level, you really want to progress, you really want to accelerate your life, you really want to see what's really truly possible for you, then you need to hustle in every area of your life. You can't ignore one area. So I try to bring a whole different diverse range of guests on the channel so we can learn from them you and me both we can actually follow in their footsteps and achieve the same levels of success that they have been able to achieve so i try and follow their journeys and their stories and tonight i'm joined by somebody very very special we actually got connected by a mutual friend dory clark who i interviewed previously in the um in the fall, I believe, of 2017. And I'll put the link below in the description of the video so you can go check it out. But this gentleman is absolutely incredible. He is such a nice guy. He's very open, very giving. And he's also, check this out, a former FBI special agent. Yes, you heard that right. And for over two decades, he was the team leader for the New York field office crisis, which deal with like hostage negotiations um, and other high-end cases. So during his tenure, he actually handled rapid response incidents, including domestic and international hostage situations and kidnappings, and used negotiation techniques for successful outcomes in espionage cases, fugitive apprehensions, and many other investigations. Prior to his career with the FBI, this person was an ordained minister in the United Methodist Church. He is now the CEO of Plowshare Communications, and he helps companies and executives cultivate strong relationships, de-escalate tension conversations, create instant rapport, build trust, and negotiate when the stakes are high. Without much further ado, please help me welcome Mr. James Chip Massey. Chip, thank you so much for coming on the channel. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. Oh, Talal, it's a, a pleasure to be here and, and thank you for the invitation, sir. I greatly appreciate it. You're very welcome. Um, I, first of all, just want to ask, how did you get connected with Dory? Because Dory is somebody who I really look up to. She's absolutely incredible. I interviewed her earlier, you know, uh, I think towards the end of 2017 on the channel. And she just added so much value. It was just incredible having her on. And she brings so much energy, so much excitement. It, it was absolutely wicked. So I'm just wondering, how did you connect with Dory? You know, exactly. I, and I found the same to be true with, with her as well. Uh, she's just been a tremendous resource for me. Uh, so with Dory, I was, you know, I got to her through her books. All right. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, I, I read her, her first two books while I was uh, still employed with the government. And because I've always been interested in entrepreneurship and, you know, starting my own business. And so it's always been in the back of my mind. Uh, so I picked her books that was a natural fit right. and I saw that, you know, she was open to, uh, you know, talking to people about developing a business. So I, I read those books. I thought, you know, this is a person of real integrity. You know, I mean, she's not one of those people that goes out and says, you know, uh, I'm the greatest thing that there ever was. I'm, you know, look at me. She's so low key and, uh, just, you know, doesn't spend a lot of time talking about herself, but she's all about, well, like you are, you know, it's all about the other person. Uh, so I just, you know, she's very refreshing uh, and just has uh, so m a wealth of information. I'm sure that's, oh, yeah. that's what you have found to be the case as well. So that's exactly right. That's it. That's how I, I got uh, I got introduced to Dory. Oh, awesome. And you're absolutely right. Like if you are, have, you know, a keen keen interest to learn and progress, then everything she says is just pure gold. It, it's, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. Um, Chip, can I just ask, how did you actually come across her books in the first place? You know, it was, I, I again, I'm, I'm a big uh, library nerd. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, 
I, I'm in there uh, all the time, and uh, you know, I'm looking at new books and uh, books on business, and you know, uh, I believe it was Stand Out was was there on the shelf. I just pulled that out, and I said, "Wow, this is great!" And I just had to find out more. So that's how that's how I got the book. Fantastic! That's awesome. Um- Chip, the amazing thing here is the fact that you have just an incredible story. Um, and, and this is what I try to do. I've tried to follow people's stories and their journeys through life uh, just to kind of expose everybody else to really what's truly possible for them. So let's start from the beginning. Can you tell for the people who don't know about, you know, what it's like to be a FBI special agent and, you know, how you actually deal with such high level, you know, uh, situations with where the stakes are really high, but also they're very, very delicate situations. Like there's some really tough decisions that you suddenly have to make. So what was it like for you when you actually joined the, the FBI Bureau and what kind of process that you went through to develop yourself to get to that level? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, absolutely. It, you know, it, 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 so it's been, you know, over 22 years, but it, in a, in a real way, it's in a blink of an eye that it, mm. that it uh, but yes, sir, I started out, um, you would said it in the ministry. Um, and for me, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that experience, you know, that, you know, I, I've, I've told people that the, in the ministry, you can, you have an opportunity to help somebody every day Mm. you know it's like uh but we all have that ability and i you know but for but for some reason you you have a license that that um that i think is bestowed upon you that that people know they recognize you as hey this is somebody that cares about people right yeah so uh i that was the part of the job that i just i just loved to allow i just you know people knew they could trust me they could come to me with their problems their crisis whatever it was and uh, I would listen. I would, t- and we would work through it. And um, uh, it was such a privilege. I think is is the biggest word I, I think that comes to mind when I when I think about that experience. That I was I was allowed um, to be such a a part of a person's life and their experience and what they were going through. I I can't tell you what that meant to me. Um, but at the same time, while I was there, it was it it was a you know. Um, the, the life that that they call uh, for anyone in the ministry is, or any any type of work, whatever it is, when you are uh, working with people at that level, it's a uh, it's a very draining uh, experience as, as well. Uh, it's very demanding. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's a twenty four seven situation. You are, you know, you live. I, I like to say it's you're in a fishbowl. You know, it's kind of like everybody sees you know you and and, and all the time, and they are they're always. You know, um, you're always on display. <laughs> so you're <laughs> gone. Um, uh, and I was always away from. It seemed like from my family. Uh, and it's uh, it, so. In, in that respect, it was a lot of stress involved in that. Um, but uh, so I and I always felt that I, I wanted to do something. You know, with the investigations, I thought that would be interesting. And right. uh, I didn't know what form that would take. Uh, I wasn't sure, but I, you know. Uh, just like everybody else, you know, movies, the books, and, and so forth. I, I thought, well, you know, let me, let me, you know, see if there's something like that that would satisfy this this hunger that's in me. <laughs> yeah. So I talked to some people that were um, uh, that were in law enforcement, and one of the uh, people I spoke to was an FBI agent, and one was a former one. I just kind of happened upon them, and they said, you know, it was a great experience for them. They, you know, they, they, you know, were so. Uh, glad that they took that route in their life and they can't imagine that they, you know, doing anything else at that time. Right. Uh, so I, I looked into it at the time and there was a typical hiring freeze as, as is the case so much in, uh, uh, in the U S government. Uh, so I said, okay, well maybe that's, that's, it's not the right time. So I just, you know, or maybe it's not for me. So I just, I, you know, put in my application. They said, you know, you know, it's on file. If we need you, we'll call you kind of thing. So, I guess a couple of years went by, uh, right. and then I got the call. They said, uh, "You know, we we have your application. Uh, would you like to come in for testing?" So, you know, it's just like one of those things. You know, I was like, "Okay, I'll try the testing." I don't know. You know, we'll see if it works <laughs> out. 
And then I went, you know, from the from the written test, I got through that. And then there was a whole series of other tests. And it just seemed like everything else just kind of, you know, it just kind of worked. It opened up for me. You know, there was a there was a big hiring push at the time because everybody was retiring. And uh, so that's how I, I ended up at, at Quantico. It was funny uh, to how I tell people when I re- when I reported to Quantico, uh, it was on a Sunday, Sunday evening in 1995. Right. And uh I had I had just uh, preached my last sermon that morning and then went out uh, uh, to, to Quantico. So I, um, yeah, it was a it was a big change, uh, yeah. obviously. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, but that whole uh, Quantico was amazing. Um, I, I mean, it was uh, it was a long time to be uh, in training. Um, it's even longer now. Uh, I think for me, it was just four months. It's 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 uh it's it's uh it's closer to five i think now um but uh absolutely that experience was uh you know amazing to me really was um so to your question so uh in when i after after graduating quantico um you know you're you've given your credentials you're to you, you report to the field office at the time that was for me that was the washington field office right uh which was um in DC, and it's uh, it was <laughs> it was located on a on a piece of property they call Buzzards Point, uh, not what you would call a picturesque office uh, by any stretch of mansion. It was it's named after the fact that there were so many buzzards in the area. Right. Uh, I think you might call them vultures over in England, um, but uh, at any rate, they uh, you know you're just kind of you're okay. You know you've got a you're assigned to a squad. You're assigned cases. Go. You know kind of thing and uh they don't just throw you in like that you're also given a training agent you're giving someone to show you the ropes uh the way things work um to kind of model yourself after yeah uh, and and uh, you know uh talal is every step it seems like in my life i've always had incredible people to help me you awesome. know hmm. i haven't i haven't accomplished anything in my life that hasn't been because there was somebody there to help me to influence me to to push me to be better or uh, to show me the, the right way of life. Um, so it, anything I've accomplished, it's, it's always because of other people. Um, so, and, and that was the case there. You know, I, I learned from such great teachers uh, that uh, were there that, you know, showed me the way and uh, showed me the, you know, the ways of the Bureau, how to interact in different, you know, how to accomplish the paperwork that's there and, and all the, you know, myriad of, of administrative tasks and investigations and uh, everything like that. It's like, you know, I tell people, I said like, because uh, I never knew what a FBI agent did. You know, I, I, I didn't know anyone until I was interested in, you know, finding out. I mean, I, I, um, and uh, so I was, you know, I was like, what the heck do these people do? You know, <laughs> um, so uh, just, uh, you know, when you're there, it's, you know, you, you see that other side of, of life and you see what, uh, the demands of the job and 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 what are the day to day grind and I, I I keep telling people it's like wow that must be really exciting well yeah there's parts that are exciting but I'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> sitting at a computer uh, typing up those reports and the administrative tasks and then because it, it, everything has to be documented that you do everything mm. if you if it's not documented it didn't happen you know so uh, that's something you learn early on and some are you know I was. Uh, not the best at uh, at paperwork by any stretch of the imagination, but I but you have to keep it up. Mm, yeah. Uh, so so that part not so sexy, right? You're at the keyboard, and it's just like every other job. You're like grinding that out. Uh, but um, but yeah, the the, the work was uh, phenomenal. It, it really was phenomenal. Awesome, awesome. And and you know you touched upon something there, which which is really powerful. And you said I have never really achieved anything except for with the help of other people. And I think that's really true for people who are watching this. I think that's a really important point to highlight that you cannot achieve extraordinary results and a tremendous amount of success by yourself. You need people to help you, guide you, you know, as mentors to show you what's really truly possible for them and also to hold you accountable and challenge you and show you the way. And you also need to support people who are just there to emotionally support you and uplift you and drive you and motivate you. And finally, you also need people who are there, you know, picking up the bricks because sometimes you're just ready to run through walls, but somebody's got to pick up those bricks, right? So you also need that sort of crew, support crew to help you 
you know, kind of take care of the stuff you kind of, you know, leave behind, essentially. So there's so many levels that kind of apply to this. And it's so important. And I really love that you, you, you shared that openly, because I think that's really, really powerful. That's just, that just really highlights the fact that everybody who has achieved extraordinary results, they were not born like that. They mm. had some help along the way. And I think everybody, you know, who has achieved those results, if you ask them, they'll, they'll respond in the same way. So thank you for sharing that. That was really powerful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not at all. Uh, that, you know, it's funny. Um, uh, one of the experiences I, I noticed right off when I left the, the ministry and the FBI in the, in the days following, I all of a sudden realized that, you know, the people around me, no one had any problems. You know, it's kind of like all of a sudden, you know, everybody's fine. There's, you know, nobody's coming to me because, you know, there somebody's in the hospital or somebody's sick or, or somebody's struggling with this uh, problem. None of that. And, I, and then I realized, wait a minute, I'm no longer the guy, you know, I'm no longer the guy that, that, that people see as the, you know, this is what's going on with me. Can you help me? You know, Reverend. Uh, so that was, you know, I, I kind of went through a, a, a kind of a loss in, I felt of calling in, in that respect, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Talel, is that I realized when I got to know the people I was working with, it, t- it takes much longer. But then that trust level builds up because, you know, yeah, I'm not wearing the collar anymore. But but they know that after a period of time that you work with people, I know that your experience, you know, you get that trust again. And, and people do see you as as uh, the person that uh, that can help and wants to help, I, I guess, more like. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at now uh, is, yeah, I've, I've, I've made this other change now, you know, and um, I've, I've started this company and I'm still trying to help. You know, that's my thing. I'm always trying to figure out. How is it I can I can get in there and and actually you know make a contribution to someone's life um, uh, that means something you know not just uh, you know uh, and and that's one of the things I I I love about your site you know is that you it, there's no two ways about it if you know if you you know when you listen to your broadcast I mean you are there to add value that is a given you know and you obviously and you know we had an opportunity to chat prior to this. You obviously care deeply about people, you know, and that resonates and comes through, you know, that that kind of trust building and integrity and, you know, that giving nature. It's not everywhere. I, I, I found, you know, it's not it. Not everyone holds to that at uh, that level. And I, I, I think it speaks volumes about you. Uh, but yes, it, it, exactly. So um, I, you know, in the in the bureau. I think part of what I was uh, dealing with was um, uh, understanding that, you know, the most important thing I think that we can learn as it, it, that they try to develop in us as, as agents is you've got to listen, mm, you know, yeah, you absolutely have to listen to the people's story yeah. um, because it is a, the, it, it, that skill set. If you if you if you know the way to interact with people and they spend a great deal of money at Quantico teaching and ensuring that the people that graduate there are very good listeners and can mm-hmm. connect with people, mm-hmm. uh, because that's you know that's that's it you know it's it's taking the time to, to when somebody is is like they might be struggling with you know I, I know something about this uh, this crime or. I, I think something you know might be happening, and but you but to get there, you've got to listen to the story. You know, you've got to you've got to build that level of of trust with that person, and that's and that's where it starts. You know, um, I've seen, uh, and we all did. You know, we all went through role players, and you know, part of the uh, experience at Quantico is that you know is uh, let's say they give you like a bank robbery scenario. And, you know, you're everybody's assigned, you know, they break up your class into different into different groups and every, you know, every team is like their own squad. And so you're assigned different tasks to do. Well, in, in, inevitably, you know, you're going to go out and do interviews to find out, you know, about what's going on. And the role players are trained to, to know how to respond. Now, so they, they say, hey, if you don't feel like this, uh, this training is coming to you and they're 
asking you in a in a in a polite and a, a respectful manner, or you know, you know, you're to shut down. You know, you're right. to do what you typically do. You know, yeah. And so, so there's they they put a lot of effort into that, into interviewing and and getting the making sure that you are accomplished at at doing those those things that we take for granted a lot of times that really we don't do it too well enough. You know, mm. the list thing is so is so key. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so yes, I, I think uh, those are that's that's a critical thing um, that 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 we focus on. So, awesome. Awesome. I love that. And first of all, Chip, I want to say thank you so much for those kind words. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I, I generally just wanted to help you and everybody else, like any guest who comes on to my show, they are very special to me. So I want to build that relationship with them. I want to take it to the next level and I invest in that relationship. And that's important to me. Uh, but I, I also understand that from what what you're talking about, in terms of listening to people's story, I absolutely believe in that, which is why I kind of started this channel. So I can expose the audience to the stories of everybody who's in my network, right? Because not everybody has access to the people who, who are in my network, but I can definitely give them access by doing this show. And that was the motivation behind it, to give people access so they can really start to see what's possible for them, for how they can accelerate their life. Mm-hmm. And finally, Chip, I know it must have been very different and and, and maybe even quite challenging to go from being a minister to being an FBI special agent dealing with high stake, high risk scenarios and, and, you know, trying to get to the bottom of those investigations and find out what crime happened, why it happened, who did this and all that kind of stuff. So there was a lot of pressure there. I'm just wondering... What kind of mindset did you have that allowed you to successfully transition from one position to a completely different position and still find success there? And also, were there any particular habits or routines or kind of like practices that you had that allowed you to have success in a completely unrelated, different field? Because I think a lot of people who are watching this might be able to relate to this. They are trying to do something with their life. They have gone down a certain path, but then they realize they've walked the wrong path and now they want to change and go do something else. But they're scared. They're afraid. So I'm just wondering, what did it take for you to go from being a minister to becoming an FBI special agent for over two decades and find success in both fields? Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, it's... um Interesting is that I, I recently, uh, you know, thought about it. Is that um, I've met people in both of those uh, walks of life, you uh, many times at the worst possible point of their lives, mm. you know. And that is, um, I have I have met as a minister. I've met families that have gone through incredible, like a, a grief experience, like the death of a loved one, yeah, uh, yeah. and maybe someone tragically died. Um, uh, huge crisis maybe in the family um, and also in in as an agent you know when when we knock on someone's door mm-hmm. for an arrest uh, that is going to be the worst part of their life you know if they're if someone is talking to me as an agent generally that's not a good talk mm-hmm. right um, that is you know th- that is I'm usually bringing bad news uh, about something that I, I think that they're involved with or if, uh, but on the other hand, um, there is there is an opportunity there to also uh, you know be somebody as a resource in that in that community to help you know hopefully that they know that I'm somebody that I you know that they can talk to. But but going back to your question, Talal, is that I, I think that the skill set that I I developed in the ministry, uh, being able to to listen to people with empathy. Mm. Uh, you know that is that is a big component of a crisis negotiator, or we used to, we used to call them hostage negotiators. Uh, the team I was fortunate to be a part of at the New York field office, um, which is a you know getting there was a, is a whole other story. But um, but that's one of the key things is if you cannot connect to people, yeah. where they are, what they're experiencing in their crisis, in the, and you have to do it immediately. If you cannot connect in thirty seconds. To what is going on, then they'll most likely going to shut you down, and you're not going to have that chance again. You know. Uh, yeah. So the 
so in that in that respect, it is it is a critical need um, that we we be able to connect um, mm-hmm. from a person to a person. You know, uh, so it, it uh, you know that maybe the the uh, the same level of stress wasn't there in in the ministry into because I probably had a little bit more time just because the the credibility was already there. You know, it was already established. Uh, I most likely had already had a relationship with that person, you know, as a, as you know, in the parishioner sense. So, uh, but here, you know, when you are like, say, if you work in a, a kidnapping and nobody knows, you know, you from Adam, mm. you know, they, they know the reputation of the organization. And that's and that's certainly important and vital and helpful. But but they're still going to look to you, and they're going to say, "Are you the person that can help me?" Are you the person that is going to help me bring my daughter home? Uh, are, or is somebody standing at the edge of a bridge, uh, you know, and thinking that they're going to, they're going to you know, commit suicide right there. Are, are they going to, you know, trust you enough to tell the story to? Yeah. So, so it's, that, it, it's that, yes, there is that kind of, you know, crisis mode mentality, absolutely. Uh, but the skill set, I, I think, is very similar in, in that respect. And that helped me not only as a negotiator, uh, but also helped me in my day-to-day casework, I found. Mm. Uh, so, you know, being able to talk to people and, uh, you know, have them trust you enough to give you information that they don't want to. You know, that's really what it comes down to. You know, it, it, uh, when, when you're interviewing somebody and you, you know, let's say, you know, let's say, you know, the person you're talking to is guilty. You know, you just know, you know what you know, right? So, uh, so it, it's now it's, it's a matter of, is that, is that, that you have to help them tell it, you know, and, and that's really what it's about. If, you know, you have to have that, that ability to connect with them to the point where they're saying, you know, I just got to tell you. They're still, you know, most people still want to unburden themselves. They do. They still want to, they're still, even if they're like uh, been in the, uh, been in crime for a while, there's still an element of them that wants to change things or, or rectify something or whatever it is. If you, if you connect with that, you know, they, they'll tell you the story. They absolutely will. Yeah. Right. Right. Awesome. And again, you, you talked about some really powerful stuff there about listening, about communicating about building trust about building rapport i'm just wondering if there are any specific strategies that you use to to accomplish those things because i think that can be that thing is quite transferable and most of the time we end up negotiating lots of things every single day in our lives without maybe realizing consciously that we're doing it but certainly those things are transferable in normal day-to-day life as well maybe not the stakes are not as high maybe the risk is not that that high but cer- certainly those those things do correlate with what happens to us on a day-to-day basis now that could be something like you might be negotiating with your three-year-old to brush their teeth at bedtime or you might be negotiating with your boss that you know you deserve that promotion or that pay raise so can you share some strategies with us that actually allowed you to build trust and build that instant rapport and help the the people kind of unburden themselves and, and build that communication link? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the uh, uh, the non uh, uh, FBI stories I like to tell is uh, <laughs> uh, is a, is the time when I was at my my gym and um, you know just finished a workout. It was it's a crowded New York City gym. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody's kind of rushing about to get ready to, to go off to work. Well, you know, for some reason, there were these two big guys that were just starting to, you know, have a beef with each other. I mean, they were going back and forth with, you know, some pretty aggressive language, you know, and it was getting it was obviously getting heated and it was it seemed like it was coming to a head. So I'm like, okay, wait, let let's let, let me let me take let me see if I can help here, right? I'm 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 a negotiator, you know. I I I know what to do here. So I you know I go over to the two guys and I said I said to one of them I I pulled him to the side and I said, listen, I said, can I can I just talk to you for a second? Um, you know, my 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 voice was was low on purpose because I I wanted him to kind of listen to what I was saying. 
and I was speaking slowly and I wasn't I wasn't using you know long sentences reason for that is we know from uh, you know various studies that are done when someone is in a crisis experience or someone is in a heated uh, exchange or uh, whatever it is their emotional level is so high hmm. that that what they really need to do in order to to have a emotional state change is that we need to bring them down to a more stable level right right so with this uh, you know my my uh, my plan was to divide and bring this person out and talk so you know thankfully he did he he, uh, he agreed to just uh, step out a little bit from from looking at and hearing the, uh, the the kind of attack and listen to me then you know and I was connecting with him and I was making sure I had eye contact with him and I was saying you know it must be so frustrating for you to you know to have this happen and to be attacked like that when you give that words you know when you when you allow them the opportunity to respond to that first you've, you've made an emotional label and that's so key uh, is that is to identify the emotion that you think that you're hearing so if I so by me saying you know it sounds like you're really frustrated that helped you know if you know he's, he's thinking to himself wow somebody understands right somebody understands what, what I'm going through right now yes I'm very upset this guy accused me of this and he said that and he said I was you know in his way and I said okay that yeah that does sound very frustrating and I'm sure you you know you wish that you know that there there was a better way to respond to this and so we we talked about that and so in, in the space of about three minutes I, I had him agree to just pick his stuff up and just just you know walk out of the gym and not to engage the guy wow so so he does that right he mm. he uh he he collects his stuff and goes um so Talal, i'm feeling pretty good right i'm like okay this right big fbi agent negotiators worked it right uh, so I go up to the next guy. He's still upset. He's talking to management. He's saying, you know, you know, in uncertain terms about their ancestors. It's getting heated in there too, right? Right. So uh, I said, I so I go up to him, and I make the most outrageous foul you ever a negotiator could ever do. I said, listen, hey, you need to calm down. Mm. Calm down. I can't. When the words came out of my mouth, I said, I, 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 I just wanted to fold and crumble, right? Because I knew I just I had just egged him on, mm. and he said, "I have to calm down. You have to calm." And it just exploded from there, right? I was like, "Oh, all right." <laughs> I realized, you know, I had a victory. I got, you know, I got carried away. I forgot my training, mm. and uh, all of a sudden, I'm in I'm in a typical uh, zone of you know saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. So I said, "I got to save this," right? So. Uh, I, I said, you know, you're right. I, that's the wrong thing to say. I'm sorry. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm just going to step away. And he eventually, you know, calmed down. And uh, as we were exiting, I made sure I, I left, you know, with him. And I said to him, I said, listen, I'm sorry. I said, I, I let you down. He goes, well, what do you mean? I said, you didn't need to hear someone say to you, calm down. You needed to to be heard about what you were feeling, what you were expressing there, and I, I and I'm sorry I took that away from you. Wow! But he shook my hand, mm. almost a hug. He said, "Listen, I thank you so much, man. I I really appreciate that. I felt like you, you know, I felt like you were listening to me. Mm. That's absolutely, wow. I said, I'm sorry. Um, so you know, those are the things is that you know, listening, making sure that you're you're really connecting to them, uh, hearing the emotion." that the person is saying you know they may not be saying that that specific thing like i'm mad i'm angry but you might be able to you know you're definitely going to pick that up mm -hmm. you know you're going to pick up frustration you're going to pick up sadness you're going to pick up disappointment rejection you know all the human experience the emotions you'll find it and and once you do once you're able to connect with them at that way then that allows them to vent yeah and that's what we don't give people enough time to do you know we don't allow them to vent. People need to vent, mm. and, they, and that's a, you have to be okay with that. You know, you have to be okay with accepting. You know what? I might get some abuse from this person in, in terms of, of 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 a verbal attack, but eventually, that's they're going to calm down, and that's what you want. You want to bring down them so that so that they they become more stable in terms of that emotional continuum, and that that's when they can start to hear 
and understand and say evaluate where they are and, and what it is you you know you you present as a help yeah so, so those are key things never let they, they said in training never let an emotion go by without labeling it hmm. and that's so that's so key in, in everything that we do wh- wherever we are you know whatever work you're doing you're going to run into conflict right you're going to run into people that are having a bad day uh people a uh, boss is frustrated and taking out anger on you uh but there's there's things that you can do about that one of them is to hear it and the other is to label it and to and to allow them to, to come down and you know what not only will will that you know bring down their emotional level but they'll also see you as a stable person in their life and realize that you know that, hey they're they're respecting me by listening to me I need to respect them and hear what they have to say you know so it it, it, it kind of works in so many levels empathy is so critical you know that it listening with empathy uh, I can't tell you how how many people are just you know you know so thirsty for that you know they just don't feel like they're being heard and if you can connect with people at, at that level it's amazing you know the progress you can make absolutely I yeah. love that story that was that was absolutely amazing I love that story thank you for sharing that yes sir yeah I mean th- that's incredible that it just shows like how you trying to resolve something. But you, if you say the wrong thing, it, it will actually escalate the situation. So I absolutely love that story. I think that there's a really, really strong message there as well. I'm, I'm actually curious, Chip, because people who are watching this, I'm sure they're thinking the same things like, wow, this must be a really high pressure, high stakes job being a FBI agent. And obviously you had to develop, you know, all those skills and you had to pass the exam, etc. But nothing really can prepare you for a high stakes, high risk, high pressure situation in real life when you have to go and deal with whatever has happened. So how did you deal with that pressure? What, what helped you get through? And then eventually once the situation was over, how did you actually had that release? What, what allowed you to actually, you know, bring yourself back down to, you know, planet Earth? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times with us, like people, you know, in everyday life as well, we get frustrated with things, right? So whether it could be, you know, say an argument over some some finances with your significant other, or, you know, it, it could be it could be a bit more serious, you know, like that situation in the gym. I'm just wondering what allowed you to actually perform at that high level, but still, you know, stay in control and deal with the situation rationally, but then also, you know, like de-stress yourself. Mm, okay. You know, I think I'll, I'll, all that, much of that goes back to training. You know, um, it's kind of like, uh, it, uh, for you, for example, I mean, you, you are this incredible athlete, uh, and you know in, in, in various circumstances, if, if you are in the ring, uh, you know what you're going to do, but you don't think that. You don't think about it. You just do it because mm. that's what your training tells you. Yeah. So the the uh the 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 great thing about going through uh, all those uh weeks at quantico is that they train you to handle these situations and to handle yourself uh the the most the only the only person's behavior that you can control is your own right yes so I love it. you have to come in and be the the both the emotional leader uh, in that situation, regardless of, of who you are encountering, um, that is the that's kind of like the uh, where you put on the big boy pants kind of thing, right? Is that uh, you have to you have to take that responsibility, and 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 I say that both as uh, uh, you know, if you're an FBI agent, if if you are uh, a, a lecturer at a, at a at a at a university, whatever it is you do. If you become the emotional leader, then it's amazing is that people will respect and listen to you much more than if you are, you know, the kind of person that says, I said, do it. You do this. This is how you do things. You know, my way, the highway. Um, but if you are the kind of, of leader that realizes, hey, I'm in, I'm in control of my emotions here. I'm in control of what this, of, of how I respond to this person. So we get you know anyone in law enforcement you know is going to get berated at some point by by somebody that's upset or angry at 
either the government or the city or uh, you know their life circumstance, whatever. And you're going to be thrown at a lot of stuff that you know we that you know it's not you, and it's certainly not you that they're upset with, but it's it's perhaps that you just happen to be standing in front of them, hmm. uh, and and or you are confronting them with a truth, difficult to, you know to accept sometimes, right? Is that uh, you know I go up to someone and I say to them. Uh, Listen, you know, we have this evidence against you. We have this evidence against you. Today you're being arrested. You're going to go. We're going to handcuff you. We're going to take you out of your house. And we're going to put you in front of a magistrate. Uh, before that, you're going, to, you're going to go to the marshal's office. You're going to be fingerprinted. They're going to be booked. So their lives just changed, you know. Yeah. And so it's not just them, but it could be a family member there. And they're hostile and upset. And they don't understand. And they're in crisis mode. Uh, anything. But... But whatever comes at you, you have to understand, you're going to have to absorb that, right? But at the same time, you don't own it. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't reside in you. Mm. It's just something being thrown at you. And you go back to your training. All right, we know from that this person's in crisis, they're reacting this way. And I know that the best thing I can do is be in charge of myself and my own responses. So how can I de-escalate this situation? So I listen. I listen with empathy. I try to, to, to pull it out, to figure out the uh, emotions that they're going through. We talk about what's important to them. And I make sure that I, I use open-ended questions, right? The kind of questions that, that help them work through and can tell their story effectively. So all that brings to bear is, is that, uh, to that question to allow is that you're in charge of, of how you respond to every situation. Um, and there's both a there's both a, f a freedom in that and a responsibility in that. Uh, and I think if you embrace both of those, you look forward to actually encountering people like that because it, it's kind of like, a, you know, I, I use the example when I'm, when I'm talking to executives is that uh, that call that comes in from an unsatisfied customer, right? And they're screaming and they're yelling and they're, they're just not happy. They're not having it. So you've got customer service on the line and they're, you know, they don't want to take that call, right? Yeah. It's the last thing they want is the angry customer call. I tell them, I said, after my training with you today, you're going to run to that call. Mm. Because, because it's, it's, it's there that you have the greatest uh, chance to change somebody's, uh, you know, outlook on who you are in your company. That yeah. you have an opportunity to impact them. But you have to know how to do it, right? It can't just be like, you know, my example. Hey, calm down. No, that's not going to work. Uh, you know the, the techniques that are involved uh, to uh, to uh, to accommodate that. You know all the things we we just talked about. Uh, you know not taking it personally, uh, listening to the story, identifying that emotion. Uh, it's it's all you know all that works. You know it just works, and that's why the FBI uses these techniques to negotiate uh, with uh, hostage situations because it, it just flat out works. It's effective. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, there are certain times where one of the guests mentions something and it hits me. And I get shivers and, and, I, and I get goosebumps and I was just like, oh, this is awesome. I love it. You know, I start getting giddy about it. And you just said something there which had the same effect. And that was that we all have to become emotional leaders. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that, you know, that, that, that title of being an emotional leader. And we also need, you know, obviously have to remember that it's our response to other people that we have control over and nothing else. So, yeah, I absolutely loved it. And thank you for sharing that. Chip, you are absolutely incredible. You have added so much value to us already. But I want to explore a little bit further. I want to know, obviously, everything that you have learned in the FBI and how you actually managed to successfully negotiate some very, very difficult situations that involved, the, you know, kidnappings and hostage situations um, and everything else. All that experience, all those skills, all that knowledge, how do you think that can be transferred to the business world? Because I know you just have launched a business. You're helping people, you know, take their communication, their sales, 
their understanding of emotional values to a whole new level. And I'm just wondering how you think that those skills, that knowledge and all that experience can be transferred to the business world and help the people in the business world take their business skills level to a whole new level. Mm. Oh, great question. So my thing with uh, the whole idea and philosophy of negotiations is this, is that, uh, you know, if, if you're at the point where you were sitting across from somebody and you are going back and forth over a specific negotiation point, let's say, my thing is, I never want you to be in that, in, at that table at, for that purpose. And here's what, what I'm saying, is that I believe the negotiation starts from your very first interaction with somebody. Mm. So, so if you, uh, like say, you're talking to a client um, and you're hoping to develop the, their business, uh, you, you, know, you, you want them to, to buy your product or, or sign up to your uh, uh, law firm or be, a, be a, uh, a new stockholder, whatever it is, um, the first thing that you have to communicate is trust, right? So you have to be able to build trust with that person. And how do we how do we build trust with somebody? It, it go, everything goes back to like that like that book said. Uh, you know, everything I need to know in life I learned in kindergarten. Well, it's so true is that you know it goes back to the very basics of being a good human being. Um, is that we start with trust by laying that foundation with the very simple things. Um, for, for example, you sent me an email saying, hey, you know, great, I'd, I'd like to talk to you, uh, we, you know, let's set up a time, and you followed through all the way down the line. I mean, you told me, you know, in, in, in specificity about, you know, when we would talk, what we would talk about, I mean, it was tremendous, and I knew that from that, that this is somebody that I can trust is going to, it's going to be a great interview, everything is going to be smooth, because this guy has his act together. It's same is true, and let, let's say we're, we're, we're talking to a client, is that uh, if we do the small things, if I say I'm gonna call you back tomorrow, and I don't get a call from you, I, I got a little check mark right in the back of my head. Maybe this guy isn't like as dependable as I need him to be. Mm -hmm. Little things like that. Uh, I, oh yeah, I'm gonna return that email to you, don't worry about it. Day, like days go by, right? Uh, we're counting on that colleague to to give us that, and it's not there. I don't have the information. It makes me look bad. I've got a double check mark right against yeah. that person. Yeah. So, so how do we? So, one of the ways that we can repair that is that we become we become Uber that other person. So, so if I say I'm I'm going to uh, I'm we're going to meet at 3 p.m. I'm going to be there 15 minutes ahead of time. And that's who I am. That's who I decide I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the person that shows up early, not just on time. I don't want to be that person that's running and saying, uh, "Hey, can you can you hold up that meeting because I'm, you know, I, I to be honest, I you know I, I slept too late, right? Uh, you know, we can't say that, but that's 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 the case a lot of times. But if we if we start doubling down on those kind of things, that I'm, I let's say. I know that this person sent me this email and it's important to them. I'm not going to leave this office until I, until I send them a response. We be that kind of person. So that's how we start to rebuild that trust, repair that trust. Right. And so it, it starts with that. So, And the other thing is when you're with the person, I, I know a lot of times uh, salespeople sometimes, they tend to want to talk about themselves excessively. I'm the greatest thing that ever walked the earth. Uh, my company can do this. I've done that. You know, I've accomplished this. And, you know, it's like, okay, you know, heard a lot about you, but you don't know anything about me, mm. you know? And that's where the listening comes in. And, you know, again, that goes toward building trust too, you know? Is, is this person really care about me? You know, is this, is this more than just a, you know, a client relationship? Is there actually a breathing person that, that, genuinely cares about the success of, of what I'm trying to do besides what they're trying to do. Uh, so, so those are our key thing going back to that empathetic listening, you know, you know, it, just as a, you know, we, we struggle every day. It's one of the things I, I, I tell people in seminars is if you know somebody without a problem, you don't know that person very well. Mm. And everyone is dealing with something, Love you know, that. We, we come to work every day and 
everyone is struggling with something, whether it's bills, whether it's a bad relationship at home, whether it was a really lousy commute, uh, you know, they're struggling with something. Something is, you know, and we have to, we have to understand that and respect that and, and know that meeting people where they are, not where we want them to be, is key. Yeah. It's key. We can't just turn a page and say, okay, I checked this box in terms of I told them about the, our product. I checked this box in terms of told them about our guarantees. I'm now ready to close the sale. No, right? Because you have not yet, they have not given you permission to turn the page. Yeah. They, they haven't given you permission to be that person that is, that's going to give you the sale, mm-hmm. right? You have to show yourself worthiness of that. You have to be the worthy person. So, so those are our key transferables to, to help somebody if they're, if they're trying to figure out, you know, what, are, what kind of skill set might help me? You know, be a better salesperson, or uh, be a better financial advisor, or uh, be a, a, a better barrister. Uh, all these things, you know, if you if you use these uh, these the skill set, you know, you're going to improve not only as a salesperson or as a professional, but as a human being. And yeah. that's what you know is that that's what it's what comes across is is that you have an authenticity. You know, not only are you are you in a position of 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 trust now, but you're also in a position of, hey, I've got this other thing. I, I would love your help on this. Can you would you can you help me on this too? You find that people will bring you everything if they trust you, if they feel you have integrity. Yeah. So so those are hallmarks. You know, in trust is is such a big big thing. Um, and if you can if you can be that person. You know, people open up, you know, to you and and want to do business with you from here to eternity. That's a fantastic answer. I, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And you again highlighted some really important things there, like you have to be more interested in the other person than trying to be interesting yourself. Mm-hmm. You also mm-hmm. talked about building trust and coming from a place of value and really listening to the other person in an empathetic way. And all those things I, I, I absolutely believe in and I talk about a lot. And, you know, there's a, one of my friends and mentors, his name is Jeff Woods. And he talks about these things all the time. Now, he's the guy who started two different podcasts, started different businesses, um, and he's really, really successful right now. But this is everything that he's believed in, and then that's allowed him to get to the next level. So, yeah, uh, wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and I love it. Now, Chip, I'm kind of conscious of your time, but I do like to do a quick fire round towards the end end of the interview. So I've, I'll ask you a few questions. You just answer them in any way you can, but we'll, we'll just keep it nice and short, nice and quick. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Awesome. So my first question, Chip, is if you had to go and look for happiness, if you're looking for happiness, what's the first place you would go to look for happiness? Ah, uh, so it has to be my service to others. That, that's absolutely, I mean, it, it you know, we can't, I, I don't feel that we can ever have true happiness unless we're really helping out our brother or sister. So uh, that's what it's about for me. Oh, I love it. That is deep. That is very deep. And I absolutely love it. Awesome. Um, okay, next one. If you were a Jedi and you had the power to use the force to do anything you wanted, what's the one thing you would change from the past? Oh. I, I, it would be a belief in myself. I, I, mm. I feel like if I feel if if I had had more confidence growing up. Um, and a belief in myself, I, I, I think that would have helped me tremendously growing up. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. And, and you're right. You know, self-belief, self-confidence is everything if you want to find success. Because if you don't believe in yourself, then why should anybody else, right? Yes, very true. Awesome. Also, Chip, I want to ask you, if you had a chance to go and maybe make a difference in somebody's life for example let's say there's a homeless person 
right? And they 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 just they're just asking for some advice. What one piece of advice would you pass on to them that you think would be most valuable to them? Uh, uh, I think you know that's I, I guess I go back to that's going to be situational specific, right? Because everybody's got a story, and I think that. I think I would first I'd want to understand, you know, as best I could, you know, where they were right now, how they got there. And uh, then I would try to figure out how how I could plug in to help, okay. you know, I, I guess. So the advice would be dependent upon, you know, what got them there and, you know, what kind of service or healthcare professional or mental health person, to, you know, could I could I get them to that that might help? I don't know. Perfect. Perfect. And my last question is, Chip, where did you get your hair cut from? Because, man, that looks sharp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, lo locally. Yes, locally. Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks really good on you. It looks really, really sharp. And, and I've, I've been sitting here doing the whole interview, and I'm just like, damn, that's a nice haircut, man. That, that looks <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I'll, I will pass on to my barber. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, Chip, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Um, you added a tremendous amount of value. I mean, the people, if you're watching this right now, you'd agree with me. Chip is absolutely incredible. He talked about so many different things that were super powerful. And I tried to highlight some of them as we went along in the interview. But really, everything that he said about building trust, about empathetic listening, about being an emotional leader, about the exact strategies that he used in his FBI career, to connect with people and the story that he shared in the gym on how actually he said something to one person and he completely disescalated the situation because he was able to connect with that person. But then with the other person, he said something that was maybe not the right thing to say at that time and it didn't quite work out. But then how he went on to resolve the situation. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. Some real powerful takeaways that I will be were you know taking away from this conversation and i'll be implementing in my life for example how you connect with somebody at an emotional level how you build trust how you listen to their story and label all the emotions that are happening and they're going through as as you're talking to them what are they feeling and try to really put yourselves in their shoes and also reassure them and and build that trust with them so they can open up to you i mean i absolutely love that that's something i can use in my daily life with my family with my friends and definitely with my students when i'm with them in my normal job as a math lecturer so that was really really powerful chip i really loved it thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us i really appreciate it i'm just wondering uh at the moment what what's your main focus for 2018 and how can people help you right now I think uh, right now what I'm, I'm trying to do is, is find out, you know, uh, who the best uh, 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 candidates are for, for my service and uh, try to plug in and, and add value as, as much as I can to, to the uh, businesses and, and various entities that, that need it. So that's, that's, uh, that's my biggest challenge, I think, for 218. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And if people want to reach out to you and, and connect with you, what's the best way they can reach out and connect with you? Yeah. So hopefully uh, by the time this is uh, uh, put out there on the on the web, I'll have my website up. Uh, the they can connect to uh, chipmassey.com or uh, the name of the company is also Plowshare uh, Communications. So uh, anyway, they you know if you. Uh, type in one of those you're gonna you're gonna get to me so awesome awesome thank you so much for that um, and guys if you have watched this and it has really added value to you something has resonated with you and you think wow this was amazing I'm going to try and implement that I'm going to try and practice that then I would say reach out reach out to chip and start a conversation okay all you have to do is hey chip I you know, listen to that interview on Talal's YouTube channel. Really great. Thank you so much for adding value to me. That's all you have to say, but start a conversation. And if you're somebody who actually thinks, you know what, I can actually benefit from Chip's, uh, you know, skills, his knowledge, his experience, his experience as a minister, as a former FBI special agent, then reach out to Chip, okay? And I'm sure he's going to really help you take things to the next level, to really accelerate your life. 
Chip is actually has just launched his new business where he's looking to coach people, where he's looking to help people, uh, you know, learn more about negotiation skills, sales skills, communication skills, etc. So if you are somebody who you think that I can benefit from these in your business or maybe even in your personal life in terms of your relationships, then I think Chip is the right person to go to. He's the perfect person to go to to talk about all those things. And he's just, just launching his new business. So he has the time. I mean, if later on when he's got loads of clients, he might not be able to connect with you. And he might be unreachable. And now is the right time, I think, for you to reach out and connect with Chip. So go ahead and take action. I always encourage you guys to take action. It would be absolutely incredible if all of us then reached out to Chip after this interview and said, thank you. I think that will add a lot of value to Chip. He's been absolutely tremendous. He's helped come on and add a lot of value to us. So I just want to say, make sure you go, guys go ahead and take action. And also share it with somebody. Share it with somebody who is close to you, who you think might need to hear these things, these messages. Share these ideas with them so they can maybe accelerate their life and take their life and their business to the next level. Chip, for the last time, thank you for taking the time to be here with us. I really appreciate it. Let's do round two sometime because there's just so much I wanted to talk about. There's just so much I wanted to dig deep, you know, explore with you but obviously we're restricted by time so i'd love to do round two sometime it would be my pleasure and thank you for the invitation to thank you so much no problem at all all right guys i'll catch you in the next one until then stay awesome and hustle hard take care